Today, we got the first major press conference from Sir Keir Starmer, who promised to be the government for all, even if you didn't vote for him, or it was your first time. Some 80% of British voters didn't vote for you. That's including those who didn't vote at all. What does that mean in practice, in a sense, for the culture of the government and how you'll govern? Uh, it was very important to me to say what I said on the steps yesterday about those that didn't vote for us because we're a government of service um, to all people, whether they voted for us or not. Um, and I include within that people who voted Labour for the first time on Thursday. So that was Keir Starmer earlier today. Let's hope it was just an oversight that they didn't do a question with GB News. Now, Keir Starmer is now primus into power as first among equals and is picking his cabinet. If you voted Labour yesterday, we will carry the responsibility of your trust as we rebuild our country. But whether you voted Labour or not, in fact, especially if you did not, I say to you directly, my government will serve you. Politics can be a force for good. We will show that. We've changed the Labour Party, returned it to service, and that is how we will govern. Country first, party second. Angela Rayner was the first to stroll into number 10, retaining her position as deputy leader. She also becomes levelling up secretary and more like levelling down. She was previously pushing to end zero hours contracts. I hope she has a rethink on that one. Rachel Reeves, the first female chancellor, she played chess from an early age. Apparently, her father taught her the key moves. By the time she was in secondary school, she was a national champion. Now, I used to play chess. It makes you very strategic. Yvette Cooper becomes home secretary. She's married to Ed Balls, who can often be seen sitting smugly next to Susanna Reid. Both he and his wife, Yvette, are veterans of New Labour. They are all but scrapped. Uh, Rwanda, that's been the first thing. Uh, David Lammy, Foreign Secretary, clearly uh, a woman is foreign to him. Is it transphobic to say only women have a cervix, David? I don't know if it's transphobic, but it, it's not um, accurate, Nick. I mean, obviously, you, it's probably the case that only uh, that trans women don't have ovaries, but a cervix, I understand, is something that you can have uh, following various procedures. A cervix is the neck of a womb. So unless you've got a womb, you can't make a neck for it. Others include Pat McFadden. He is one of the few members of the new cabinet that has experience serving in government. Uh, none of the others have so far. Uh, they have been in the opposition for that long. Under Gordon Brown, Pat served as parliamentary undersecretary at the cabinet office and later as a minister in the business department. Uh, Shabana, Shabana Mahmood will be serving as justice secretary. Now, she became the first female Muslim in the House of Commons uh, when she was elected in 2010, but uh, has clashed with Kiss Starmer on Gaza was streeting, who before politics openly tweeted uh, about Jean Moir. Jean Moir. Uh, plus, he had that issue with Suzanne Hall, where he made the comments about uh, white supremacists, presuming that we're the ones that are voting for her. Uh, but on the plus side, he's acknowledged that he was wrong on the trans debate and is looking to reform the NHS. I sincerely hope he succeeds. Uh, Bridget Philipson, who once starred in the background uh, for Biker Grove, by the way, she becomes the education secretary, although perhaps she could learn to answer a few questions like that on uh, private schools. And Ed Miliband became the energy uh, secretary, which is uh, fitting, really, because he sort of reminds me of one of those creature comforts. Remember those? <laughs> Our political editor, Chris Hope, asked him about his plans. Good to see you, Miliband. What are your plans for government? Lots of exciting You're going to act GB News viewers will love it. <laughs> We're loving it. We're loving it already. You love GB Energy at GB News. We love GB Energy, or if it works for the viewers. Ask how much our bills are going up, Chopper. You government. You excited? What, what, excited. Are you, what are your plans then for Very government? Very excited. We'll have our first cabinet meeting and then we'll tell you a little bit. Okay. There we have it. <laughs> Ed, Mil Ed Miliband thinks that GB News is going to enjoy his government. We'll, we'll wait and see on that one, shall we? Yeah, well, I'll be honest here. The Labour Party at this stage were the only credible alternative. Yes, a massive majority is worrying as it gives you total control. But as we saw with Conservatives, they squandered theirs after the disaster of the Tories. Surely no one could be worse.